Scott Ramirez, your host of Stand Out and Grow. I want to help your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Building your business is really, really hard. And knowing what marketing and advertising tools you need to help you become successful is extremely confusing. After 30 years of working with thousands of businesses, I am here to help you make good business decisions. I want to help you understand the programs that are available to you so that you can stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. So let's get started. Hey there, this is Kat Ramirez, and thank you for joining my special podcast, Stand Out and Grow. Uh, I look forward to having you join me today and um, being part of my special guest, T. Renee, who uh, has just a great story to share with you. And if you read the intro, you will see that she has really gone through a lot, and I can't wait to hear it. (laughs) She's gone through a lot and really has um, flipped things around and brought herself up and created success for herself. And uh, as we are, as anything that's part of my show, the Stand Out and Grow show, this is probably like a great fit and perfect alignment for what I'm trying to bring to you, my audience, uh, and uh, what I want you to learn from others. Let me bring on my very special guest, T. Renee Smith. And give me a second here as I do my props. <laughs> hey, Re- T. Renee, how are you? I'm good, Kat. How are you today? I am fantastic. And I am absolutely thrilled to death to, I'm going to put some white background on us. Uh, I'm thrilled to death to have you join me today. And I am super thrilled to have you share your story because it is incredible. And I'm curious, I'm, I, you know, just reading your bio and what you have gone through just really just made me like, wow, this girl, she's, she's amazing. I haven't even met her and she is amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Well, first of all, thank you. I'm so excited to be here to share my story. Thank you. Thank you. you- you're welcome. Okay, so before we get into your story and then, you know, uh, asking the questions that, we, you know, I put dropped in the comments, I want you to give us a little background about you, you know, because I'm sure that anytime you speak or you're doing conferences or you're training, you probably have a nice little intro that you warm things up so that people can perk their interest and and be able to comment and chat and ask you questions. Mm -hmm. So it's so funny because I always like to share based on where the audience is kind of that relates to my journey. So I'm going to start out and say I'm a recovered workaholic. I think I can start there. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) I think I can start there. So when you're so dedicated to your business and you're dedicated to growing, I think oftentimes we let things slip. And so we're focused on the goal. And so maybe we let family slip, relationships slip, or even um, dotting those I's and crossing those T's in business. And so I have been uh, guilty of all of those. And so my story starts back when I was 19. Um, I started my first business. So I've been an entrepreneur for about five years. Just joking. Over 20. <laughs> did you catch that cat? I did. So I did. Over uh, 25 years, serial entrepreneur trying um, different businesses really to find out which one was going to be my niche. And so I had gotten in a business partnership uh, with someone that didn't have the same values as I did and found myself in a whole bunch of legal trouble. Uh, fast forward a few years and a lot of money and legal battles later, I found myself being sentenced to prison. Oh and this God. was after I had had gotten married. So I'd been married for four months. I got sentenced. And then um, I found out that we were expecting our first son. <gasps> wow. So all of this in like a four month period. So a couple years prior to that, I lost everything, the million dollar house, the Mercedes, the Hummers, all of that, and I had to move back in with my parents. And okay. so It just was a journey for me. And I always tell people when you think that you've hit rock bottom, oftentimes that is the starting point. So a lot of people may have looked and was like, oh, my God, that was the worst thing that could have happened. You just got married. You were pregnant. But that is when I was introduced to me 
and who I was, and that is where I found my purpose. And so, so many of the things that I'm doing now, I actually started doing 10, 12 years ago. So that's in a nutshell. Okay. So I just from that conversation there, I, I have to ask you, so was the business partnership, was it like someone just came to you and said, hey, I have an idea. I'd like you to be a part of my partner. No, it was my partner at the time. It was my boyfriend at the time. And we oh, were together for 10 okay. years. So 10 okay. years in a relationship and then uh, 10 years in the business. Okay. So be very careful, people, who you go into business with and who you're in relationship with. Okay? Be very okay. careful. Okay. <laughs> so were, were there any red flags there? There like- were. Absolutely. Absolutely. From the very beginning. Yeah. But um, I, I grew up a very trusting person. Yep. So I grew up great parents and uh, I just was very trusting. So I accept people at their words and I always believe the best in people. So absolutely they were. Yeah. Because if I, you know, and, and again, I don't know you like a lot, but just I don't from, know you know you, <laughs> right. but just from, you know, having this conversation with you and getting to know you a little bit prior to show, like my gut says that you're a very ethical, honest person so I just feel bad because you know I'm kind of like that too where I'm very gullible sometimes you know and if so my- don't try that now people I am no longer <laughs> that person let me just put that out there don't try you learned, that you learned your lesson don't try that you, you but learned. I was so I think I was so focused on the work like I love business. I yeah. love everything about it, marketing, sales, branding. And so I just wanted to learn. I wanted to serve clients and I wanted to do the work. So I was not um, focused on some of the business decisions and the legal decisions and things like that, that I should have been. Okay. Yes. Uh, well, I get it. And you've learned a lot from it. And now you've become very successful in what you do today. So let's talk about you today because you have been recognized in a lot of publications, Cosmopolitan, um, uh, Entrepreneur, Black Enterprise, and Parent Magazine. So what what are you doing today, Renee? (laughs) So for me, I took all of the lessons that I have learned and what I realized is success, it is very duplicatable. I may have just word, made up a word. I don't know if that's a word, <laughs> but it leaves clues. And so what I realized is that from the beginning, I just jumped in when I started my business, you know, on credit, no strategy, no plan. And so now through everything that I went through, building successful businesses, losing them, having to file bankruptcy and starting over, I actually created a strategic roadmap and a plan of how to build a successful business using my build framework. So today that is what I teach to small businesses, whether it's um, suppliers of of a corporation or just small businesses in general. So I teach you how to go from startup to growth to scale. Everything being systematic, but everything relating to your purpose and your passion. So I think a lot of people say, uh, just follow your passion or follow your purpose and you'll be successful. That's not true. If you don't have a plan, if you don't have a strategy, then you're not going to be successful. And then on the other hand, a lot of people say, well, just find a business that can make money. But if you don't infuse your purpose and your passion in it as well, then um, you're not going to have complete success or abundance. So I focus on 360 degree success in business or abundance. And that means mind, body, spirit, relationships, finances, and the business. And so I teach everything that I have learned to other small businesses. Okay. So that sounds like a lot because you, you said a lot because they say mind, body, spirit, uh, relationship relationships. and finances. Yeah. Finance. So that's five, that's five major elements, which um, as an entrepreneur myself, I can tell you that I can totally relate to that because it, when I started my business, I will tell you, I was so absorbed by it and consumed that a lot of things happened. I drank too much. Mm-hmm. I gained weight. My skin was bad. I was eating bad, you know, just a lot of things because you put yourself as like not the priority. You put your business as a priority, right? The business is completely the priority. And I am part of a lot of groups where, and this happens a lot. I don't know if it happens to men. Men never tell, never, men never raise their hand and say, hey, that happened to me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) But you know what's so funny is it does because my whole brand was targeted towards women. 
Yep. And men were like, well, I feel left out. I need what you need to have too. And behind closed doors, their marriages are being affected. Yep. They're gaining weight. So it is happening to them as well. Maybe not the exact same thing, but similar things. Right, right. Yeah, because um, I can't, I, you know, when I talk about my story or when I am with in women's groups, you know, I can see it with other women that are starting their rollout as an entrepreneur. And I can predict it for them because the outcomes are not favorable if they don't make a change of course, right? They don't start putting their priorities or separating some things. And I, I love that, that you focus on those five main things that are really, really important and affect everybody's life, right? Mm -hmm. And what's so funny is they all boil down to one thing, which is mindset. Okay. And so the core of my business focuses on CEO transformation, because mm -hmm. when you transform the way that a CEO thinks, then every single thing in their life will change. Most people are looking for more strategies. They're looking yep. for more hacks. They're looking for more things to grow their business. And really, if you just change your standards and you change your mindset and you shift your mindset, then everything else in your life is going to shift. Okay, so let me ask you this, because that's a really great statement. Mm -hmm. Does this happen overnight? No. Thank you Nothing for saying that. Nothing happens overnight. <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was just at a conference and one of the speakers was saying, you know, it takes 15 years to be an overnight success, right? So it took you 14 and a half years of doing the work. And then right. that last year, people recognized you, but you've been doing it for 10 to 15 years. So nothing happens overnight. I'm so glad you said that. because Let's say it again. Nothing happens. <laughs> Overnight, people. Look at me here. That thing. Do you run into that a All lot? All the time. Would people want instant gratification? I'll meet CEOs that have been in business a year or two years. And I joke with them and say, so you basically wanted to incorporate your business on Monday. And by Friday, you want to be six and seven figures. Okay. Right. That doesn't happen. So I think a couple of things. I think society has shown us all they show are the highlights right? The red bottom shoes, the jets, the yachts, the vacation, <laughs> what have you. Or they say, oh my God, when I launched my product, I did, you know, $800,000 in two minutes, but they don't say, guys, this is my ninth product, right? And that the first eight I had failed and that I've been doing this for 10 years. So I think that social media, it yep. has sold us this instant night, you know, overnight success. We see celebrities have babies at 10 a.m. and by 12, you know, the same day they're in a bikini, you know, and so, so women, right? We're attempting to do that, not realizing that a lot of these women, they were working out two, three hours a day before. They have nannies. They have cooks. So I think society has set up this unrealistic expectation for us. And so we think that if we're not achieving it, then we failed. Yes, I would agree. I would agree. I think the thing that I find a lot of is with entrepreneurs, they set aside like a budget if they, let's say that they bootstrapped or whatever, or mm -hmm. pulled money out of their 401k and then they've exhausted it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And now they're ready to give up. And a lot of times, you know, and, and you hear this all the time, they've invested this money into this minutia, right? This, uh, the systems, the process, the thinking, the energy, the time, and they're giving up when, just when it's about, Not. yep just when it's about to go around that curve and and then i so i don't know if you hear a lot of that or, or if you're getting a lot of that and it's because they didn't financially make that money sustain right mm -hmm. sustain and so i remember and i think it was tony robbins that said it but he said that it's going to cost you three times as much as you think to build a successful business, and it's going to take you twice as long. So we overestimate what we can do in a year, and yeah. we underestimate what we can do in three or five. And so I think what happens is we don't realize it, but we have very unrealistic expectations, okay, <laughs> about business growth and about sales. So what's crazy is even if you look at the amount of time that it takes for you to get a sale, 
prior to the pandemic, it took like seven or eight touches, right? Yep. Meaning somebody seeing you on social media, maybe yep. seeing an ad for them to know, like, and trust you. Now that people are just on overwhelmed fatigue with all things, Zooms, social yep. media, whatever, it may take you 12 to 14 to 18 touches, right? So I think the, the, the most stressful thing is starting a business and from day one or month one or month five, like you have to be profitable or make money to sustain your life. Like that is stressful. People think it has to be all or nothing. They're like, oh my God, I want to do this business. I'm going to quit my job. I'm going to, you know, take out my 401k and I'm going to do it. Now, for some people, if that is what God is telling you to do, then okay. But for other people, because you saw it on, you know, TV or social media, and you thought that you could do that too, then you got to really understand who you are, how you're wired, and your risk tolerance. People just are not patient, right? I tell businesses, listen, if you have, or business owners, if you have an, or future business owners, if you have an idea that you mm -hmm. want to do in business, okay, slow roll it. Start the business while you're working build the business up, save money. And then when the business is at a point where it just, it can survive on its own and yep. you already have money saved up, then go and take the leap. But many of us are jumping. We don't even have on a parachute, you know, is no lifeboat down there to save us. Yep. We just jumping. Yep. Yep. So, um, this is great because, um, I talked to a client the other day. Okay. And so, they have really good numbers. Uh, so this is a new startup business. And let's say it's retail. I'm just going to try to be as very discreet. I'm not yes. going to call their name. <laughs> yes, I'm not going to try and just kind of like draw the picture. So retail, they started out their business. They're three years into it. Okay. So two years ago, let's say they ran, they made about 40 five thousand dollars okay they only put five thousand into the business just so you know so that's okay? a great return on investment yes but they won't four hundred fifty thousand. wait 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 <laughs> last year they tripled that tripled the problem that they have is they can't keep up with the capital they don't have enough money mm -hmm. to buy more inventory and i hear this a lot yeah. is they have a great concept they have a great product the demand is there but uh and i don't know if this is in your wheelhouse mm -hmm. but but they don't have the capital to invest into the inventory to keep up with that does that make sense it absolutely makes sense and what happens is that they don't have the right systems in place and they scale too fast and so it is more common than not where people are having difficulty in scaling but yep. it is where people they um they get out there they test the idea people like it but they never had the strategy in place to be able to scale so that absolutely is an issue and so then you have to go back and you've got to look at um your team You've got to look at your sales system, your sales cycle. You got to look at your collections, you know, and how you're collecting. So you have to go back and you have to look at the business infrastructure and determine what is it that you can modify, or are you going to have to go out and get additional capital for the business? Right, right. So, so to me, that's a. I think that happens more often than not, and a lot of people probably don't raise their hand. They don't raise you know, their hand. Yeah, and maybe they're at that situation. So if you're tuning in and you're you're one of these people, um, and call Kat. Well, no, call no, you. Call <laughs> you're you're like, no, honey, don't call me, don't call me. <laughs> they don't need any more marketing. Yeah. They need someone to help them get some capital, right? Some get some investor or, or even a loan or something. But you know, the thing is, is they're not they're not in the green yet because they're trying to keep up with the inventory right it's they're just so it makes it really difficult for a business like that but what happens is once they get that sound infrastructure in place and as long as they have um decent credit and that yep. they have their accounts receivable where they are collecting, then they will be able to or should be able to get capital. But they have to be able to show that they have an infrastructure that is going to be able to sustain the growth yep. and that they will be able to scale. So it's a very good problem to have. Oh, I but believe you. Have you. To, but you have to breathe and you have to become very strategic. Right. You have to become very strategic. Right. So who is your ideal 
customer? Who's your ideal client base? Like who who are you helping on a day-to-day basis? Yes. And so I'm going to give you guys an acronym real quick that is going to help you. Okay. <laughs> because everybody is not your customer. Everybody's okay. not your customer. They have to be a fit. And fit means that F, they have to be able to financially invest in your product and service. So say that with me. They have to be able to financially invest in your product and service. I, they have to be implementers, meaning that they are going to be committed to implement what you're telling them to do. And they're going to shift their mindset to do what it is that they need to do. And T, they have to be time conscious, meaning that they're going to be willing to invest the time that is required for um, your business or for your services. And so mine is, it's women businesses. I do work with men too. So men, I do work with you. It's just that my target, my brand right. is for women. And it's for women that women that have been in business for several years, because a lot of times when you are just starting your business, you don't know the work that it is going to take. You will um, feel like you can do everything yourself. You may not feel like you need to invest in um, a coach or in a strategist. So it's women that have been in business for several years. They have tried to do the solopreneur thing by themselves. They realize it's time for them to scale and to bring on um, additional team members. And they're ready to invest the time and the money into developing a proper business infrastructure in order to grow. Okay. So that is it in a nutshell. Okay, perfect. Um, And that makes complete sense. Um, So um, tell me a little bit about your services. So what do you provide to people? What, What are you helping them with? So I help them with the actual tactical strategy. And we do that through, I have a monthly membership program where every month you come into the implementation lab with other CEOs like yourself. And we take that 90 minutes of dedicated time and we work on your business. Most CEOs are so busy working in their business, servicing clients, getting new clients, marketing, that they are not focused on the vision, the strategy, and the tactical things that they need to do. So in the membership club, we meet monthly and we go over and create your plan and Mm we um, talk daily through chat to make sure that you stay on point and so that is accountability so that's one the membership program then we do quarterly workshops where you actually come in and for a concentrated period of time we're focusing on a specific area in your business whether it's branding marketing sales leadership or systems okay and so those are really the two ways that we work with um, our small business clients Okay. Awesome. Um, now when someone is part of your, um, program, Mm -hmm. okay. Um, what is the involvement? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, I can't do that. I'm already exhausted. Like what is the bandwidth for that person? Um, because you talk about fit and I love that you should, you should like trademark that. That is awesome. Already I, in the process, so don't I, you try. It's already in the process, already in the pipeline. I love that because I love the acronyms of that. Um, but, you know, a lot of times for people, you know, they talk themselves out of having a mentor, a coach, you know, all these things that are very beneficial. And if you talk to any successful leader, Warren Buffett, uh, uh, help me out here, Um any of them. If you talk to Warren, Elon Buffett, Musk, you, anybody, any, any of anybody. them, you, they all have mentors. They all have someone that they go to. Uh, you can call it mentor. You can call it coach. You can call it whatever you want, you know. And so people talk themselves out of it, right? Mm-hmm. So remember I said it all goes back to what? Mindset. Yeah. And it is for individuals that are willing to shift their mindset because what I tell them is you always focus on the ROI, the return on investment. That's what you always focus on, but you never focus on the COI, which is the cost of inaction. Okay. So if you continue running your business the way that you're running it now, where is it going to be a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? Is it going to help you achieve your goal? So it's not that you don't have enough time to do it. It's that you you don't have the right priorities and you don't have the right boundaries. You're saying yes to way too many things and you're not saying no. So when you're serious about growing your business, then you have to say no to probably 80% of the stuff that you're saying yes to and then focus on 20%. Is what you're saying yes to moving that needle. So the very first thing that I do is help you shift your mindset. And now we're going to go and find time because you're doing stuff in the business, a whole bunch of administrative stuff, a whole bunch of operational stuff, a whole bunch of things that are necessary 
some of them, but are not going to move the needle. So we start off with what I call my 3D uh, system. Are you going to do it? Okay. <laughs> are you going to delegate it or are you going to delete it? Oh, and the I things love it. that you are doing, <laughs> like 85 to 90% of your time should be spent on revenue generating opportunities and opportunities that are going to grow your business. So that's what you're supposed to be doing. So if you're doing tasks that number one, need to be deleted because it's not moving the needle or it needs to be delegated, then we have to structure your business so that now you can do the things that you need to do. Yes. I love that. That's great. You girl, you just get to the <laughs> point. Let's get to it. <laughs> so it's funny because I say, don't think to think just to think, you know, you have to think to act. And so you've got to think about what are those things that you need to be acting on and doing it. And so if anybody says, I don't have the time, mm -hmm. probably for three to 5% of people that's true, right? So I remember several months ago, my mom was sick and it was just like for a period of six months, I did not have the time because I had to take that on and helping her. Yep. But the other times I do have the time, I am just, I don't realize it. How much TV are you guys watching? How many, how many hours are you surfing on the internet? Yep. How many, so that you have the time like I said, unless you're in that small three to 5%, you just have to see that you have the time. Right. How, how much time are you spending on Wordle, that new program? Hmm. Um, okay. So I have a great example on this because I had a client and this was great because I think a lot of people wouldn't really read into what this client told me. Okay. So the client, um, we give 30 days for free, right? And so he took the 30 days and he's a business owner. He's trying to grow his business because I always try to make sure I understand and know their expectation. Mm -hmm. And um, he does all the day-to-day -day minutia, right? The day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. And so if you're trying to grow your business, okay, one of the things that you can do is you can take, remove some things, right? Delegate. Mm -hmm. remove some yes. things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we did his 30-day trial. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that, he's like, I don't get it. You, you would do the same thing I do. So why would I pay you to do it? Okay. So here's what I told the social media manager who talked to him. I said, if he doesn't get it, if he doesn't get that, I'm buying back his time, Yes, that I'm giving him his time back. Right. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. all I'm doing. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We're going to do the same thing you're doing, but I am doing it for you. Mm -hmm. You now have that I don't know, hour, two hours a day that you can work on high level stuff. Because you think about it for him, those two hours, that could be $50,000, yes, $100,000, whatever it is where he could be focused on getting the contracts to expand his business. So whatever he's paying you is way smaller oh, yeah. than what, yes, Kat, you were talking my language. Girl, but he didn't get it. it I know he didn't. Geez. And so he was not a fit. He just nope. was not, he was not a fit for you. Nope. And that's what I tell people sometimes. Sometimes we are attempting to force something yes. that is not there. Nope. Don't want to do that. Don't. Not worth your time. Because they will end up being a client headache. Yes. I agree. And, and I'm glad you said the, that. And not seeing the value of what you offer. I, I, I totally agree. If you have to convince someone and beg them and like shout and beg and beg and beg it, it's don't do it it's not because what it. that says is you don't realize your own worth and value yes because when you realize your worth and value you can simply say to them cat you know what we will be here in the event that you decide that you Ex want to you know gain back your time and we wish you much success yes exactly and exactly. then move on to the next one. Oh yeah oh yeah but so, that's because you value your services you value yeah. what you do oh my god girl <laughs> yes it, wait but it took me just like you, Years it took to me a, yes, because at first I will tell you, I took anything, everything and anything. And that killed me. It, it killed me because I was bending over backwards. I was working late. That's what made me drink too much, eat too much, you know, all this and the other majority crap. of them probably didn't even appreciate it. You had some that did, but you probably yeah. had a lot that didn't. Yeah. They just wanted more. Yep. Oh yeah. If you give, Oh yeah, they're take uh, uh, uh okay, so back to you. Um do you have some success stories you want to share? 
them. You don't have to say any names. So I do. And what is what's so amazing <laughs> to me is, um, and like you were saying, you never know what somebody is going through. And I'm going to give you um, just two quick success stories. Okay. One was with a company and she was probably, I don't know her company, $10, $12 million, very successful, very polished. When you see her online, she just was very regal. And so when we were coaching, um, I do very limited one-on-one -on -one coaching, but she was actually a part of um, a corporate program. And so I was talking to her and I just saw something on her and we talked about it. And I said, well, what's going on? I said, because the confidence demeanor that you have and you're projecting, that's not what's going on today. I said, what is really going on with you? What is affecting your confidence? She broke down crying. And she was uh -huh. like, nobody has ever given me the space to take off this mask. She said, I'm responsible for so many people. I think she has like 25, 30 employees and their families. And she said, it's such a weight on me. But her son had passed years ago and she never grieved the process. And she was like, I am about to lose it. I'm about to have a breakdown. But we talked through it. We worked on the mindset issues and her business has probably doubled in size right nice. but that goes back to that mind that body that spirit the rela like her relationship was broken with her husband yep. her relationship was broken with her other kids but when you transform the ceo it transforms everything else in their life yep yeah and so that's why i go back to the mindset yep so yep. it's not just about a business strategy or anything like that. And then I have countless of other stories, very similar, but I was another one. This was um, a part of my membership club and we were going over branding and we had to come up with what your unique value proposition is. What makes you totally different than anybody else that offers the same product or services that you did? And she kept giving me surface level stuff. Oh, it's the service that we provide. It's the quality of our products. I said, but that's what everybody says. What about you? And I was pulling it out of her or attempting to pull it out of her and nothing was coming out and she had low self-esteem she had low self-worth she wasn't investing in herself she didn't believe in herself that's why yep. she was attracting the clients that she did we did a whole mindset shift she was able to see her worth and value and now her business is soaring so again it is transforming the CEO. And guys, this is not where we had one session and it was ta-da, it's done. Okay, you're not in double my revenue. It was a process. They had to do the work. Yeah. And both of them actually ended up going to therapy and journaling. Oh, good. And good. Affirmations and all that. But their business and their relationships, they're totally in different places. Yeah. And, and you have to do the work. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you know what? I always relate to business success just like an athlete, okay? An athlete has to work at their body, their physique, their game, right? All the time. So whether you're a football player, basketball player, baseball, whatever, you know, you're in training all the time, not just physical training, mental training. You're trying to perfect that game. You know, we could talk about Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods has been beat down, what, you know, two or three times and he comes back up even more fierce, right? And so it's, to me, for him, it's a mind over matter. Like, it's that discipline. Yeah. Day in, day out doing it. Yeah. He's going to be like, this is not going to get me. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. Yeah. And I always say, don't let life happen to you. You happen to life. Right. But you have to have the mindset and the discipline in order to do that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so, you know, to give you some kudos here, if you can't muster up, right, muster up that fierceness or muster up that courage to like pick yourself up and do it, then that's when you do need to reach out and get a coach, get a mentor, get whatever it is, is going to help you because success is there. It's there. And if you want it bad enough, you can get it. You just got to muster up, right? You got to muster up that confidence in order to achieve it because it's there. It's available for anyone. Anybody can have it. It's yeah. there for grabs. Yeah. And but the people not, who the okay. people don't get it are the people who are not going to work at it, right? Yeah. And I'll say nine times out of 10, um, if you are there, you have to have somebody to hold you accountable because if you could have done it by yourself, you would have already done it. You got it. Okay. What, uh, as we wrap this up, what are you offering anybody who's tuning in today or later? What are you offering us? Well, you just said a magical word, which is confidence. Do y'all see it? It says confidence is my favorite 
accessory. Do y'all see that? I you do. Yep. Because your business will not outgrow your confidence. The pricing that you charge your clients will not outgrow your confidence. You being able to put yourself on surround sound with marketing and feel good in that space is not going to happen without confidence. So I am offering everyone that is watching live. If you're watching live, can you just drop in the chat and let us know that we are saying some good things that are hitting <laughs> home to you? And if you're watching the replay, same thing. What'd you say, Kat? Put the R yep. and then let us know what's going on. But today I want to offer you my five day free CEO your confidence challenge and what this is is going to take you through really developing those things to help jump start your confidence whether it's setting boundaries looking at the type of relationships that you're in vision it is all in there so you can register for free at the ceo.life that is the ceo.life it's a game changer do you hear me game changer that and i'm not being biased <laughs> there, you go. there you go. There you go. Did I have the wrong uh, website then? So no, I mm -mm. so I Success Consulting. That is my business. That is my consulting company. Yep. And so the CEO dot life. That is really the uh, my personal brand, and that's also uh, my business bible. That's the, okay. that's the book, the CEO life. So yes, go to the CEO dot life. And I'll put, I'll make sure that um, my assistant drops that link in all the posts just okay. so that everybody has it. So I'll make sure we drop that in. Uh, but it was very clear because I got it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that worked. You said it like three or four times. So uh, I think if someone misses that, they better drop a comment and we can <laughs> drop the the website again for you. For I sure. Love it. I love yeah. it. This has and, been awesome. Yeah. No, it's been super awesome. T Renee. And so any uh, final words to anybody who's tuned in, anything that you want to give as encouragement, like they're on the cusp, they don't understand any, any words of encouragement. Well, the very first thing that I want to say is if you've been waiting for a sign that there is more for you, <clears throat> this is it. <laughs> This is the sign. Cat, tell them this is the sign. You know that you're meant for more. And I would encourage you to change the word how. How am I going to do this? I am so overwhelmed. I don't know how I'm going to grow my business. I don't know how I'm going to market. Well, if you need marketing, you need to call Cat. But I don't know how I'm going to do this. Change it to who. Who can show me how to do this? Who can show me the strategy? Who can show me the path? Whether that means you finding books, whether that means you going on YouTube, Google, whatever, find the way. Working with me, working with Kat, working with somebody else, there is no excuse. There's information that's out there now. So find your who and then learn the strategy, implement, and then hold yourself accountable or find somebody else to hold you accountable. Everything that you want to achieve, you can achieve. Greatness is on the inside of you, but you have to act today. Awesome. I love that. And I'm so, so thrilled to death that you were able to join me today. And if someone wanted to connect with you, are you on all the social media? All Where'd social it? media platforms okay. at Coach T. Renee. So that's Coach T-R-E-N-E-E. -E. And I offer a ton of free uh, okay. valuable content. And I tell people, I say, even I said, you don't even have to buy my book. You don't even have to get in the program. If you just listen and do the stuff that I am telling you to do for free people, I've been doing this 25 years, then you will start seeing success in your business. Now, if you want to accelerate that success and have right. accountability, then you can talk to me about one of the programs. But even if you just do the things that we talked about today, you can start moving the needle. That is awesome. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being on my show. I appreciate it. Thank and, you, guys. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> hey, thank you for joining me today on Stand Out and Grow. I hope this was super beneficial to you. And I love, love, love T. Renee. She had so much to share. If you are just now tuning in, please hit the replay button and listen in from the beginning. And you're going to get a lot of great information um, that's really going to be beneficial to you personally and to your business. So um, again, as I always end my show, um, you got this. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Stand Out and Grow. 
Check out all the notes and links at www.standoutingrow.com. I am so thankful to you for helping this show continue to grow. I want to keep producing content that you want to hear. So please leave me some feedback. I look forward to bringing you more resources and information to help your business stand out and grow. Please follow us on social media and make sure you follow this podcast so you can learn more about helping your business stand out, survive, succeed, and grow. Until next time, you got this. Advertise helps businesses stand out and grow with affordable advertising options. We will help you make good business decisions so you can save money and not just throw it against the wall to see if it sticks. Get your free strategic advertising analysis today so you can see the opportunities to stand out and grow your business. Visit www.standoutandgrow.com offers page to learn more.